For a lot of people, it's unthinkable to picture a situation where they don't have access to a car. But this might be something we have to get used to in the future. Cars allow people to get groceries, bring their kids to soccer practice, travel around the country and visit incredible places you otherwise would never have seen. They offer freedom. And cars have gone through some incredible transformations over the years. From the early Ford models driving alongside horse carriages, to steam turbine engines powered by small nuclear reactors. That last idea never made it to production, by the way. I think we dodged a nuclear disaster there. And lately, it's all about electric cars. We've seen the incredible rise of Tesla and the growing popularity of electric cars in general. Running on a cleaner grid, making an in and inventing the technology is going to power the future. Tesla is coming out with an all new electric vehicle. 3,000 pounds of lithium ion cells helping the Hummer to accelerate from zero to 60 in three seconds. And look, I want to show you something. My cat. And also, here in the Netherlands, we have so many of these EV chargers, they're literally popping up on every street. So it really seems like electric cars are part of the solution to a more carbon neutral world. Not the solution, but part of the solution to a more greener future. But that's not all. The EU also has some very ambitious goals. From 2035, every new vehicle that's being brought onto the EU market has to be 100% electric. So only 12 years from now, every new car has to be electric. It really sounds like electric cars are here to save us all. We're gonna be carbon neutral and we're gonna save the planet and everyone's gonna be happy. But there's more to it because just replacing every car with an electric one is not going to solve the main issue. One thing very clear, I don't have a problem with electric cars. I think all of the technology is amazing. I mean, who doesn't want to play cyberpunk while stuck in traffic? But there's a major problem with this whole push towards electric vehicles. And I'm not even talking about the fact that they can spontaneously catch fire, issues finding a parking spot, or, you know, overloading the whole electricity grid once every car is supposed to be electric. No, I'm talking about actually building the car. And more specifically, the resources that are used to make the battery pack that powers the engine. This is Professor Harold Sverdrup. I recently saw his talk at a conference where I was working, and it left a pretty big impression on me. Harold spent his life keeping track of the Earth's resources. Materials like oil, gas, iron, gold, lithium, copper, and a whole lot more. He uses a mix of geological data and commercial research to find out how much of a resource is available on Earth, can we actually access it, and very important, at what cost. Because sometimes it's financially impossible to reach certain places. Some minerals are deep under the ocean floor, and some are beneath large cities. Just imagine you'd find a large gold deposit right underneath New York City. You can't just start mining there. The same goes for a lot of minerals under the ocean. Just trying to get there would become way too expensive. Harold's main message is that right now, we are using up all of our resources in a non-sustainable way. Meaning we burn through them faster than we can get our hands on any new supply. And if we keep going without changing anything, we'll run into massive scarcity issues. Why does this matter for electric cars? Well, shocking news, but those batteries for electric cars are being made with a lot of resources that have a finite supply. Meaning certain materials are going to run out at some point. So this creates the first big issue. Just imagine this scenario. You walk into a shop to buy some milk, but there is no milk. In this case, it doesn't matter who you are or how much money you're willing to spend. It doesn't make a difference because there's simply no milk. This is what Harold calls hard scarcity. And the best example of this is probably cobalt. Cobalt is used a lot in electric car batteries and its main function is to regulate heat, which is pretty important. In 2022, it was estimated there's around 25 million tons of cobalt available on land. 7.6 million of that is actually accessible to us and more importantly, profitable to extract. That profitable part is, again, very important to understand because our whole economy runs on profit. No company is going to run a mining operation that's losing money. 
And guess what? All of the cobalt that we physically and financially have access to is estimated to completely run out by 2040. After that, it's gone. There will be no more new supply of cobalt coming in and we'll have to work with the cobalt we already have in circulation. Which is a little bit of a problem by the way, but I'll get to that in a minute. Now luckily I'm not the only guy on the planet who knows about this cobalt scarcity. That would be weird. Battery producers are aware of this issue. So what they do is they try to find another material they can use instead of cobalt. And that material in this case is lithium. The hottest metal on the market right now is not gold or iron, it's lithium. Lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion batteries. They're also cheaper to make. So I don't know if companies are doing it because they care about the cobalt supply or just because they make more money this way. Probably the cobalt supply, right? Anyway, it doesn't matter because this creates the second problem, what Harold calls soft scarcity. Imagine you're back into that supermarket, ready to buy some milk, but it turns out there's only one package left. And you're not the only one who's craving a cold glass of milk. All of a sudden, people start bidding on that package. $20, $30, $100. But you only have $5, so now you can't buy that milk. Another guy might only have $10, but he really wanted that milk. So now he's angry and he starts screaming at the other customers and threatening them. And bam, before you know it, World War III broke out over some milk. Now, luckily we do have plenty of milk and we also have plenty of lithium. Lithium reserves are not going to run out anytime soon, but the demand for lithium is going to surpass supply. Elon Musk recently talked about this. He literally urges people to get into the lithium business because we're gonna need a lot of it in the future. Now these are not my own calculations, but they're from a YouTube channel called Cool Worlds. And they made these projections regarding lithium supply and demand using three different sources. That's why there's three different lines. But the outcome is the same. Over the next coming years, demand will outpace current supply. Not only that, but in an attempt to keep up with the rising demand, lithium mining operations will have to scale up like we've never seen before. Historical data shows that lithium supply has roughly doubled every 7.9 years. So we're reaching a point where scaling up will become a massive operation. To be fair, it's not impossible. These projections only take into account the current planned lithium extraction. And like I said before, there's plenty of lithium reserves available. So it's very likely that in the future, new unplanned mining projects will emerge and try to close this gap between supply and demand. But even if that happens, it's going to be an incredible financial and logistic challenge. So resource scarcity is coming for us, whether it's in the form of hard scarcity, where certain materials are going to run out like cobalt, or in the form of soft scarcity, where demand is rapidly outpacing supply. In any case, replacing all cars with electric cars will not solve these bigger issues. We're simply postponing them and hoping that someone or some technology in the future will magically solve everything. Now this demand for battery pack resources and the scaling of mining projects of course comes with a downside. First of all, mining those resources is really bad for the environment. It costs a lot of water and energy, it pollutes the air with chemicals and heavy metals and causes long-term ecological damage. So do we really want to drive around in our electric cars pretending to care about the environment while lithium mining operations are destroying parts of nature on the other side of the world? On top of that, this crazy demand puts a lot of pressure on poorer countries. Not only does it create a bigger and bigger imbalance in power between rich and poor, a lot of materials used for batteries come from poorer parts in the world. In 2021, 70% of the entire world's cobalt production came from this country in the middle of Africa. It's the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's a very, very poor country that's been ripped apart by Belgian colonialism, slavery, exploitation and civil wars. Yet this is the place where a lot of rare earth materials come from. Gold, diamonds, cobalt, lithium, uranium and more. It should be one of the richest countries on the planet. But instead, it's one of the most hopeless places on earth. 
Extortion and rights abuses are rife at the DRC gold mines, which are controlled by a brutal rebel group. People are forced to work in toxic and dangerous working conditions. There's child labor and abuse of power. I read this interview with someone who has been researching modern day slavery for over two decades. And he said there was no such thing as a clean supply chain when it comes to cobalt. He talked about young mothers with babies strapped to their backs, working in the mines, inhaling toxic cobalt dust. His quote, the bottom of the supply chain, where almost all of the world's cobalt is coming from, is a horror show. One thing is for certain, and Harold mentions this in his presentations, the world is going to change. Recycling is not the only solution, but it is a big one. Right now we are burning up our resources. Linear use. We use it and we throw it away. And for cobalt, for example, that looks like this. We extract some cobalt that is being injected into the market. People use it by driving electric cars, and when a battery pack dies, we throw it away. Now cobalt is one of the materials with the highest recycle rate, which is 22%. So 22% is recycled and injected back into the market. But 78% is gone forever. And now we have to extract a lot of new cobalt to keep up with demand. This is not sustainable. Plus, recycling also costs a lot of resources and energy. Now that's for cobalt. For lithium, the recycle rate is close to zero. There's so much we can do to improve this system. And Harold ideally sees something like this. This is how it must be. We now need to create a circular society. What goes out at the back needs to turn, go through recycling and come in through the door again. So just having everyone drive an electric car by 2035 will not solve anything. If we really want to be this carbon neutral green future, we simply have to find a solution to use our resources in a more sustainable way. And also clean up the supply chain and get rid of child labor and slavery in developing countries where all of our materials are coming from. Otherwise, this whole push towards EVs will be kind of pointless. Let me know what you think about this. I think it's an important topic and often overlooked when talking about electric vehicles. I try to keep it short and to the point, but if I missed any important parts, please let me know. Have a great day and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.